completed MS from Kannur Medical College in 2007, joined Krishna IVF in 2008. She underwent advanced training in basic and advanced infertility management and also a life member of World Laparoscopic Surgeon. Good morning to all. Today we will start our session with the Muller and Dect anomalies and their reproductive outcome. Muller and Dect anomalies are fascinating disorders to obstetricians and gynecologists. They range from agenesis to duplication. They has varying presentation from primary amenorrhea to menstrual disorders, infertility and pregnancy complications. Treatment vary from ability to have coitus to conceive and deliver normal babies. Due to non-standardization of the classification system and non-uniform diagnostic modalities and different study population, there are irregularities in the instance and in prevalence of the modern tetanomies. In general population, fertile and infertile women, it is 3 to 4 percent. In recurrent abortus, it is 5 to 13 percent. And in women with late miscarriages and preterm deliveries, it is increased to more than 25 percent. As a foundation to understand the reproductive anomalies, we briefly go through the emergencies of the reproductive tract. The development of the urinary duct is closely associated with the development of the urinary tract. So, urinary anomalies are associated with the anomalies of the urinary tract. But the development of the body is different from the development of the malarian duct. So, women with malarian anomalies have normal ovaries in most of the cases. At around the fourth week of intrauterine life, two pronephros develops in the cervical region and these are the primitive kidneys and these regress by the fifth week of intrauterine life. Mesonephric tube will start developing from below the pronephros and these are the uterine kidneys and these two mesonephros they are drained by the mesonephric ducts into the cloaca. From the distal part of the mesonephric ducts arises the ureteric bud which in future becomes the ureter and distal collecting system and permanent kidneys develops from the metanephros. In seventh week of intrauterine life, two paramesonephric ducts develops from the mesoderm, lateral to the mesonephric duct. And in the absence of the anterior and hormone in the females, they start developing from 9 to 11 weeks. They cross medially and get set and get set and fused with the opposite paramesonephric duct and forms the two fallopian tubes, uterus cervix and upper two thirds of the vagina. This unifying duct regresses in the absence of the testosterone and forms the vestigial structures that is paraphrene and epiphrene. The fusion of the two mullerian ducts it starts in the midline and proceeds cardioid and cephalon. At about the 20th week the development completes by the resorption of the septum and the lower urethral vagina is formed from the urogenital sinus. Any dysregulation occurring in differentiation, migration, infusion and canalization leads to malarial duct anomalies. Probable causes are not well understood. It is polygenic and multifactorial. There are many different classifications of the malarial duct anomalies. 1979 Bittron and Gibbons classification, 1988 American Fertility Society classification, Asian classification, and 2013 European Society Human Reproduction and Embryology classification system. This is the American Society classification, and European classification, and in Asian classification, not only the Miller and Anomalies, but also the urogenital which male mesonephric tubules and cloacal anomalies are included. Coming to the distribution of the specific anomalies, septopetrus is the most common and it is 35 percent and bicornate uterus 26 percent, archaeate 18 percent, unicornate 10 percent and didelphus 8 percent. In 
class one, that is simulating agencies in hyperplasia, it may be partial or complete. Complete variety is the most common, and in this there is absence of uterus and vagina. The example is the Rokitansky syndrome. In this, the woman presents with the primary amenorrhea. On an examination, she has normal secondary sexual characters, normal growth, normal external genitalia, and with short vagina. It should be differentiated from the testicular feminization syndrome. On investigating, karyotype shows 46XX female karyotype, and ultrasound MRI shows absent uterus from vagina with normal ovaries, and hormonal assay will be normal, and intravenous pilogram and renal sonography are needed to rule out the renal anomalies. Treatment is by vaginal reconstruction, either non surgical or surgical vaginoplasty, and fertility is by surrogacy and psychological support. Class 2 is the unicornate uterus. In this, there is unilateral failure or partial development of the malarian duct. It may be with no horn or horn with no cavity and communicating cavity and non-communicating cavity. In unicornate uterus, the reproductive outcome is generally poorer than all other anomalies. It is due to diminished myometrial mass, abnormal uterine vasculature. 40% of these cases are associated with the renal anomalies, that is the renal agencies, harsh kidney and pelvic kidneys. Implantation in the normal sized hemiuterus is associated with the increased incidence of spontaneous abortions, preterm deliveries in 43% of the cases, and abnormal presentations and intrauterine growth restriction. Women with rudimentary harm with non communicating cavity. They present with the pain secondary to hematometra, maybe with endometriosis, ectopic pregnancy in 4.3 cases, and pregnancy and accessory horn in 2% cases, and rarely rupture uterus in maternal deaths. Prophylactic removal of rudimentary horn with cavity is recommended to prevent complications. These are the imaging modalities in the unicornate uterus. In HST, we cannot detect the rudimentary horn. 3D ultrasound and MRI are diagnostic. Coming to the surgical management, no surgical procedures can enlarge the unicornate uterus. Pregnancy is best managed expectantly with cervical encerclage. Class 3 is the uterus bidelphys. There is complete failure of the fusion of two malarian ducts, resulting in two uteri two services and in 75% of the cases it is associated with the longitudinal vaginal septum. In some cases may present with the obstruction of the hemi vagina with absent ureter and kidney of the same side. Most of these didelphys are asymptomatic and if obstruction they may present with the hemtometrial corpus hemtosalpins and endometriosis. 20% of these are associated with the renal anomalies and most common renal anomalies are renal agenesis. Early excision of the septum improves the reproductive outcome. Imaging modalities of the didelphys are 3 uh, 3D ultrasound and MRI are diagnostic. Coming to the reproductive outcome, it is better than the unicornate uterus and all the complications which are seen in the unicornate are seen in the didelphys but with less severity may be due to the improved collateral blood supply between these two horns. Surgical management only surgery in uterus didelphys is the excision of the vaginal septum. Strassman metroplasty is done only in the selected cases with recurrent abortions. Recommended technique is the unification of the two fundi and leaving the two services intact. Cervical encyclas is mandatory if the patient conserves. Class 4 is the bicornate uterus. Incomplete fusion of the mullerian duct at a uterine level, uterine fundus level, resulting in the varying degrees of the separation of the two horns. Reproductive outcome is almost nearer to normal and preterm delivery risk decreases with increase in the size of the common lower uterine cavity. And in this, the term pregnancy rate is 60 percent and live birth rate 65 percent. 3D ultrasound and MRI are diagnostic. Coming to the surgical management, metroplasty is reserved only in the recurrent abortus. 
Strassman procedure either by laparoscopy or laparotomy. Class 5 is the septate uterus. It is due to incomplete resorption of the median septum. It may be complete or partial. Most, this is the most common anomaly with the poor reproductive outcome and with high miscarriage rates of 65% and in this the renal tract anomalies are rare because septal resorption occurs only after neurological development is completed. Surgical management is the hysteroscopic septal resection under laparoscopic guidance. It has excellent results with increased incidence of the live birth rate to 82% and decreased miscarriage rate. Prophylactic surgery is considered appropriate in women treated with IVF and in older women. Class 6 is the arcade uterus. This malformation is only a mild deviation from the normally developed uterus. Reproductive outcome is almost normal and surgery is not indicated. Dietyl steel bestrol, it is a synthetic non-steroidal estrogen. It is used in 1940s to 1971 in America, UK, Europe and France and in pregnant women to decrease the miscarriage rate. But it was banned in 1971 due to its association with the vaginal adenocarcinoma, clear cell adenocarcinoma. But those exposed women are not beyond the reproductive age and 70% of these are associated with the reproductive tract anomalies. Most common is the T-shaped uterus and others are hypoplastic uterus, constriction rings, irregular internal trend filling defects. There is increased incidence of miscarriage, ectopic pregnancy and preterm delivery rates in this and no treatment is available beyond cervical and cyclage. Mullerian duct anomalies are not so uncommon. They may present at varying stages of life as primary amenorrhea, infertility, recurrent abortions, and preterm labor. MRI helps in accurate diagnosis. Histolaparoscopy is indicated only when intervention is needed. Corrective surgery in indicated cases improves the pregnancy outcome. Thank you.